What is the latest championship transfer activity? Hello guys, how are we all doing? Welcome back to yet another video. Today we are catching up on some of the latest done deals and rumours over the last few days in the EFL Championship. Do share your thoughts down below. Let me know your thoughts on your club's business at this moment in time. We've got four weeks until the season starts now. Before we get into this video, please do make sure to hit that like button. We'll go for 299 likes on this one. So do hit that thumbs up button. And if you like your transfer activity videos, do make sure to hit that subscribe button as well. Let's get into some of the latest news. But before we go anywhere, we need to touch on the news from last week that Millwall owner John Berylson sadly passed away. Obviously, my thoughts are with his family and with the club at this moment in time, and I really hope Millwall can come together and move forward. It's very sad news, I must say. A couple days ago, we saw Ellis Sims go from Everton to Coventry for quite a large fee, plus add-ons. This is actually quite big for Coventry City. It shows a statement of our intent. I do know that we're going to have to come on to Yokerez in a minute and this is obviously going to be a domino effect from Yokerez going out the door which hasn't actually officially happened at this moment in time but I like the fact that we're bringing in a replacement ready at this moment in time. I think Ellis Sims proved himself in the championship last year. Although he only got half a season at Sunderland he did impress getting seven goals in 17 games. Everton did go on to recall him so obviously they see something in him and then he did go on to get that goal against Chelsea in the Premier League which did rescue Everton a massive point. I think this is a big signing and a big statement of intent for Coventry City moving forwards now. There's plenty of other transfers we need to touch on with Coventry City when we come on to the rumours as well. But to get this deal done for Coventry will be absolutely massive. I do feel like he will be able to get goals. I do feel like he's a handful. He's six foot three as well, so he could be quite good in the air. I'm really looking forward to this one. Coventry fans, share your thoughts on Ellis Sims becoming a sky blue. Over to Middlesbrough who have brought in QPR goalkeeper Senny Dieng on an undisclosed fee deal. Senny Dieng impressed me last season. He made 46 appearances for Queen's Park Rangers, actually getting a goal at the Stadium of Light away at Sunderland as well. This to me seems like a sensible deal from Middlesbrough. It should be a shoe in here for Zach Steffen. Middlesbrough have also been busy bringing in other players. They've brought in goalkeeper Tom Glover as well, Alex Gilbert, Morgan Rogers, Sam Silvera and Van der Berg. I like this statement of intent from Michael Carrick bringing in quite a few players quite early as well. Middlesbrough do mean business to push on next season. Borough fans, share your thoughts on all all these players coming through the door. Over to Rotherham United who have brought in Nottingham Forest midfielder Cafu. The 30 year old Portuguese midfielder has joined the Millers on a free and made 46 appearances for Forest over the last three seasons. I think this is the right step for Cafu and in his career because he will get game time at Rotherham. He only made one appearance for Nottingham Forest in the Premier League. Obviously doesn't seem to be part of Steve Cooper's grand plans for taking Nottingham Forest forwards. I do think this is a good signing for Rotherham United. Over to Leeds United who have loaned out three of their players. Midfielder Brendan Aronson has gone to Union Berlin defender Diego Lorente has gone to Roma and defender Robin Koch has gone to Eintracht Frankfurt. These loan departures make sense to me I didn't really think some of these players were going to be part of Leeds United's grand plan and getting back to the Premier League. The fact that they've gone out on loan obviously means they could come back if Leeds United were to make a swift return to the Premier League At this moment in time though Leeds United haven't had a lot of business coming through the door maybe some of this business though might make things a little bit easier on Leeds United's wages Share your thoughts if you're a Leeds United fan which which players do you think will be coming through the door in the next week or two? On to Stoke City, who have signed yet another championship experienced player in midfielder Ben Pearson from AFC Bournemouth. Ben Pearson coming through the door on an undisclosed fee deal doesn't entirely surprise me. He did obviously play on loan at Stoke City in the second half of last season and it does look like Alex Neal has certainly got a plan and a template on what team he kind of wants to build going into the new season. Plenty of experience coming through the door. Stoke City fans and if there's any AFC Bournemouth fans as well, share your thoughts on this one. I know he's played a lot of games in the championship for Bournemouth and for Preston North End as well. Ipswich Town have brought in Manchester City young goalkeeper Kieran Slicker on an undisclosed fee deal. The 20 year old goalkeeper has yet to make any senior appearance so it's really hard to describe what kind of player that Ipswich Town are bringing through the door here but obviously he is highly rated. He's been at Manchester City and he is part of Scotland's under 21s team as well. Despite a transfer embargo, Cardiff City have tried to bring in as much quality as they can. Their latest being Yako Mate coming in from Reading. I always quite liked Yako Mate at Reading. I do think this is quite sensible from Cardiff City. The 20 seven year old scored 42 in 156 games for Reading so he averaged more than a goal every four games nearly a goal every three games he has actually spent the last seven years at Reading he has suffered with a few injuries as well Cardiff manager Ballou has also brought in Greek defender Dimitrios Goutas and ex-Chelsea striker Ike Ukbo so like we say despite the transfer embargo Cardiff City are trying to be as busy as they can be Cardiff fans what's your thoughts on some of these players coming through the door let's jump into some of the championship transfer rumours going around at this moment in time starting with Coventry 
Coventry City and Victor Jokeres, where it has been a little bit quiet over the last couple of days, which is quite unusual. But I think pretty much 99% of Coventry City fans and 99% of football fans know that that Ellis Sims signing coming through the door does obviously implicate that Victor Jokeres will be going out the door. At this moment in time, there is no fee agreed with any club. Obviously, Sporting Lisbon are very, very close and they are the team showing the most interest at this moment in time. It does seem like it's a question of when is it going to happen, not if. Coventry City midfielder Gustavo Hamer is still being linked with a couple of clubs in a move away from the club, one of them being Leeds United and one of them being Fulham. Obviously, Gustavo Hamer for me and for the majority of Coventry City fans is that one player we are just desperate to hang on to. If we're being realistic, we do expect one of Hamer and Jokeres to go out the door. I am absolutely fine with Jokeres going out the door for the right money, but Gustavo Hamer, I would put a massive price tag on him. I just don't want him to leave Coventry City. Hamer has obviously just got one year left at the club on his contract. I feel like Coventry City have really got to try and get as good a contract as possible built up and offered to him as soon as possible because I don't want him going out the door this summer and I certainly don't want him going out the door next summer for free. With these clubs Gustavo Hamer's been linked with, not that I want him to go to anywhere, but if he went to the Premier League I'd be a bit more understanding. If he went to a team like a Leeds or a Leicester, a team that's just come down that's going to be in the same division as us, I would be very angry. Although I understand those clubs will be coming down and they'll have more money to offer with parachute payments and everything, I just feel with Coventry City trying to build a team that can challenge for promotion to the Premier League again. We can't afford him to go to a team that's going to be challenging for those same goals. Coventry City are stepping up their interest in re-signing Luke McNally from Burnley. The centre-back is also being sought after by Championship Club Millwall as well. I don't believe he's going to be part of Burnley's plans in the Premier League now, so I do think a return to the Championship would be right for him. I was very impressed with how good he was for Coventry City in the second half of the season. I would certainly take him back in a heartbeat, especially with Coventry City needing defenders at this moment in time, but I think it was inevitable that clubs like Millwall and other championship clubs are going to be after him as well. We'll have to wait and see how this one plays out. Coventry City are also believed to be involved in a 1.2 million bid for Japanese winger Sakamoto. The 26-year-old winger plays for Belgian side KV Oostend, but he has been cited with the Coventry City squad in Portugal. Share your thoughts, Coventry fans. I've seen a lot of people speculating about this guy on Twitter. He is believed to be a winger that can take defenders on. What's your thoughts on this one coming through the door? And finally, there is speculation that Coventry City are interested in strikers Billy Sharp and Jerry Yates. Billy Sharp, the 37-year-old striker, has nearly scored 300 goals in his career now. Jerry Yates, the 26-year-old forward, has scored 42 goals in 124 appearances for Blackpool. I know we've already brought in Ellis Sims to replace Victor Jokeres, but surely more striking options won't hurt us. I know Billy Sharp is getting old, so I'd imagine it'd only be something like a one-year contract if he was to join a championship side like Coventry. Jerry Yates may be a little bit more promising with him being a bit younger. It'll be interesting to see where these two players end up this summer transfer window. Leicester City winger Harvey Barnes is close to a move to Newcastle United, but there is an interesting twist in this tale as Manchester United are believed to be expressing some interest in Harvey Barnes. That could obviously suit Leicester City if they can try and start a bidding war between those two clubs. Let me know your thoughts on the valuation of Harvey Barnes. How much do you reckon he's worth? And do you think it's a certainty that he can't be playing for Leicester City next season? I'd imagine it'll probably be Newcastle he's going to, but Manchester United joining the race does make things quite interesting. Swansea City striker Joel Perot continues to be linked with a move away from the club. The latest clubs involved are Leeds United and Nottingham Forest. Just like what I said about Gustavo Hamer as a Coventry City fan, if I was a Swansea fan I wouldn't be willing to let Joel Perot go if it's just to another championship side. No doubt about it, Joel Perot has impressed me over the last couple years in the championship and I do think a move away from Swansea City does look quite likely. But it'll be interesting to see if he moves to a side like Leeds United. Leeds will obviously want players that are experienced in the championship, they can get goals in the championship. Can he make the step up to the Premier League if he was to move to a Nottingham Forest? How do you think he'd do there? Sunderland are keeping up a pursuit of 20-year-old Everton striker Tom Cannon. I'll be very impressed if Sunderland can bring him through the door because this player screams bags of potential. He made 20 appearances in the Championship last season for Preston North End, scoring eight goals in his time. So I think this would be a really good signing for Sunderland if they can get him through the door. There is speculation that former Birmingham City and Watford striker Troy Deeney could be going to Sheffield Wednesday. The 35-year-old striker is now a free agent. He scored 11 in in 54 appearances for Birmingham City over the last couple years and scored 131 goals in 389 appearances for Watford. I'd say Troy Deeney is very similar to signing Billy Sharp at this level now because they're both getting on a bit but they both know how to get goals in the championship. Sheffield Wednesday fans do share your thoughts on this one. Do you feel like this isn't a great move for the club? I do feel like he'd be able to get goals but he isn't exactly going to be that long-term solution for Sheffield Wednesday going forwards. And finally we'll come on to QPR's 25-year-old attacking midfielder Elias Chair who's been linked with with a move to Leicester City quite recently. Leicester City have expressed interest in Elias Chair for quite a while now. Pretty much this whole summer they've been linked with him, especially after James Madison going out
out the door, could this be the ideal replacement? He spent his last six years at Queen's Park Rangers, nearly making 180 appearances in the championship now. Obviously, he is proven at this level. Do I think he'd be a good fit for Leicester City? I think he could be, but it's going to be interesting to see what QPR value him at and if they're willing to let him go out the door at all. So then, guys, they are some of the latest done deals and rumours in the championship at this moment in time. Like I say, there might be other rumours I haven't spoken about today. Do share your thoughts on some of those down in the comments. Let me know your thoughts on your club's individual business as well as we get closer and closer to the new season starting. If you've enjoyed this video, please do make sure to drop a like and hit that subscribe button. I'll see you all in the next one. Peace out.